Nah, gang, this movie was heat for sure. They really upped the scale on everything, and I do mean everything. The battles feel really grand. The fights themselves look better. The final battle was phenomenal. And they even threw in an extremely disrespectful scene in there that I'm going to love and cherish for years on end. I really love this movie. I told y'all that I was dropping this next day, gang. So if you haven't already, check out my Tiny the Evil series video. It'll probably be on your top right right now, or not. It's completely up to you. But regardless, pull up a chair, let's chop it up. Today we're going to be talking about Tiny the Evil the movie, aka Bigger War Cry Simulator. But before we get into it, as always, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more anime analysis and review videos just like this one. Also hit the notification bell to get future updates for future uploads. So, you know how we do things right here. First, we start off with the story. The story in this movie is really simple, but it's still great. It's a continuation that picks up right where season one leaves off. Tyan's story continues after they fail to fully win the war, and to put it simply, they're just carrying out missions and Tyan is still trying to work towards getting that deployment to a rear unit to her peaceful life. There's a lot of good ass moments in this movie, and I definitely would be tweaking if I ain't highlight a few of them. The disrespect that went down at Moscow's capital was magnificent. Go ahead, run this from the beginning. Ty and Arab Platoon are basically attacking the Federation's capital to distract them and make them pull from their main forces to give the Imperial Army an advantage on the front lines. So, they pulled up and they did what 203 does best and got the blowing shit up and causing a bunch of commotion. The regular Douglas shit, right? So Tanya was talking to Victoria. She was like, hey gang, I looked a little bit into your background and I heard you got a real reason to hate these niggas. So we're gonna do something real special for you. Them niggas unlocked the side quest. Them niggas want to go grab AZ Production, G Knox Films, and Cole Bennett and start shooting the music video while singing their national anthem and planting the Imperial flag at the top of their capital. Bro, that is wild as hell. Imagine if your ops smoked your OG and went to her house and shot a video to them bopping to a song dissing her ass and showed it to you. Like, this is pretty much what they did. One of the higher ups was like, yeah, I'm not gonna cap to y'all for I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is the distraction was perfect and it was exactly what we needed. The bad news is 203 bitch them niggas so bad that we probably can't send no peace treaty for about 10 years. They even had the help of the United States and they still got shit on. Like, that's embarrassing, gangsta. I'm not gonna lie. Speaking of 203, these niggas are gross. I thought that Tanya was kind of carrying all the weight and they, they weren't really pulling their weight like that, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I ain't know these niggas was built like this. Bro, they faced 10 companies and one. Let me help you, let me help you out, put it into perspective. So, I looked it up. One company can be anywhere between 100 and 250 men. And there was a lot of niggas pulling up. So we're gonna be generous, but not too generous, and say 200 each company. We're not even gonna use the full 250. That is 2,000 soldiers, plus the bombers and the platoon of air mages from the United States. That's a lot of resources, right? So I think the Imperial Army had two companies. So let's say that's 400, and it could be less because they definitely lost men, and that's the reason they called them to begin with, plus the 48 from the 203 Battalion. So solely because of Taya and 203, they managed to have 428 niggas beat 2,000 plus niggas, and they had a super nigga on their side and Mary. That shit don't make no sense, gang. And they was doing whatever they want, bro. One of them niggas used his bayonet to cut a whole ass wing off one of the bombers, gang. 203 is gross. Speaking of Mary, let's talk about the battle between her and Sonya. Gang, this shit was spectacular. Mary really a monster. I don't know what's coming out of folks gun, but I know Tanya didn't want to get hit with them bitches. I know that for sure. I mean, look at this. She shooting bomber DXs out that bitch. She shooting raccoon racist guns out that bitch. She shooting final smashes out that bitch. She shooting Eminem diss tracks out that bitch. And she was shooting them shits pretty fast. Mary really put a switch on that Hurricane Durgan Yom Skippity ass gun. She was shooting anime verse enders out that hole. Like, that shit is crazy. The fight was crazy, though. She was mad beautiful. And then it was a close one. She made Tanya ass prey, but she lost in the end, but Tanya fumbled and didn't get the kill. And Aubrey Dre came in to come in for the save. I'm not gonna lie. I know Tanya don't like God. I know she don't believe in God. But knowing that that beast Mary's still out there, I'd grab a Bible, a Quran, a baptism pool, three elbow fat ushers, a deacon with heavily starched pants, and a holy water producing sweet coon. I'm getting real religious in this motherfucker knowing that she out here. They really did Tanya ass dirty at the end. She thought she was going to come home. She thought she was home free. And she was just chilling at her rear unit deployment. Then folks called her ass and said, Oh yeah, bro, good news. You're getting your own mixed combat unit on the front line. Toodles. 
just hug up our silly ass. That's tough, but honestly, I want to see how this unit turns out, because 203 is gross. So imagine what she could do with an entire unit. The Imperial is about to be even more of a problem. This movie story was great, gang, and I'm really hyped for season two whenever that's dropping. Great job on the story of this. All right, let's move on to characters and character interactions. All of our mainstays are back, and we even got a new character, Mary. So I want to talk about her and Taya, because Taya got a little bit of development in this movie. Mary is cool. Her ass a little slow and disobedient, but I'm not going to argue with a nigga that can make that come out her rifle. So I'm just going to let her do her. Her revenge story was actually pretty cool. She's uh she's really emotional in the battlefield. I think that's going to get a kill in the future, but hey, it is what it is. We actually learned a little bit more about Taya in this movie. We actually learned that she don't like war at all, which is crazy because she seemed like she had a grand dilly dally old time setting up her comrades to get killed by that artillery strike. But in all seriousness, I think she dead ass tired of war. She views the period after victory just as a preparation stage for the next one. That's some pretty deep shit because that's damn near how it could be in real life. So it was cool to see her perspective on this after all this. And her little monologue at the end was really cool. They did a great job of giving us our favorites and introducing Mary. I can't wait to see them in the next season. Now let's move on to looks, presentation, and music. I think the anime has really stepped it up. I mean, really, nut was all over. <laughs> My but my bad folks, but, but not that ass. They made these fights beautiful. That Taya versus Mary fight was gorgeous, man. I was shocked watching. No was really in your face. <laughs> my bad folks, my bad, I'll stop, I'll stop. No was really in your face with the over the top action. And they really did a great job on this movie. I am very impressed. The music is still great. It's really epic and grand with a bunch of choir in it, which always helps these battles feel much bigger than they actually are. So good job on the, the music in this movie. Overall, this movie did what it was supposed to do plus more. It gave us a great amount of epic battles. It furthered the storyline and updated us on the status and the main goals of the series. And it gave us more funny and messed up shit to laugh at and I loved it. And I can't wait for the second season of this shit to come out, I'm not gonna lie. If you watched the series already and you enjoyed it, and no, not you complaining ass niggas. The niggas actually enjoyed this. You need to watch this ASAP. This is a great movie. And if you haven't watched Tanya the Evil, the series, it's really good. And you need to watch this movie. So you have to watch that first. But that's all for me, man. As always, man, y'all have a great day. Love y'all, man. Peace. And Montage time. なぜ帝国は世界を相手に泥沼の戦いを強いられたのでしょう。どこで彼らは道を間違えたのでしょうか。世界を戦争へと突き動かしたのは帝国に対する耐え難い恐怖だと言えるかもしれません。ここは一応